Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna learn how to add Next Auth into an app router project. Now, the example we'll be using in today's video comes directly from the Next Learn course, which I will link in the description below. It's completely free. So if you wanna go into more detail or you prefer written content, I recommend checking that out. Today's video covers chapter 15. Otherwise, let's just open up our text editor and jump right into things. All right, so we already have the UI of our login page put together, as you can see here. But if we test it out, you'll see it has no functionality. So let's add this authentication functionality using Next Auth. Okay, so let's dive into authentication. It's not just about signing in and out. It involves a whole lot more, like managing sessions and handling various authentication aspects. Sure, we could implement this from scratch ourselves, but it's error prone and time consuming. And honestly, there's no point in reinventing the wheel when we have Next Auth at our disposal. Next Auth offers a very straightforward and cohesive solution for handling authentication in Next.js apps. It abstracts away the complexity involved in managing sessions, sign in, sign out, and other aspects of authentication. So let's start off by setting up Next Auth in our project. First, we can install it by running the following command in our terminal. Next, we need to generate a secret key that will be used to encrypt cookies, ensuring the security of our sessions. So to do this, just run the following command in your terminal, and you can see it generates a random string of 32 bytes and encodes it in base64 format. Now, we need to add the environment variable auth underscore secret to our env file using the secret key that we just generated as the value like this. Okay. Now, at the root of our project, we need to create an auth.config.ts file that exports an auth config object. This object will contain the configuration options for next auth. For now, it will only contain the pages option. This pages option can be used to specify the route for custom sign in, sign out, and error pages. It's not required, but by adding the sign in key with our login path into the pages option, the user will be redirected to our custom login page rather than the default login page provided by NextAuth. Next, we add a new option called callback, and we'll add this code within it like this. Here, the authorized callback is used to verify if the request is authorized to access the page via Next middleware. It's called before request is complete, and it receives an object with the auth and request properties. The auth property contains the user session and the request property contains the incoming request. We'll also add the providers option, which is an array where you list different login options. For now, we'll leave it empty. We'll revisit this later, but it's necessary to satisfy the next auth config. Okay, next we need to import the auth config object into a middleware file. So in the root of our project, let's create a file called middleware.ts and paste in the following code. Here, we're initializing next auth with the auth config object and exporting the auth property. We're also using the matcher option from middleware to specify that it should run on specific paths. By using middleware, the protected routes will not even start to render until middleware verifies the authentication, which enhances both the security and the performance of our app. Okay, so in this app, we're going to authenticate using the credentials provider. This means the user will log in using a username and a password as opposed to say their Google or GitHub accounts. When working with passwords, it's good practice to hash passwords before storing them in a database. Hashing converts a password into a fixed length string of characters which appears random, providing a layer of security even if the user's data is exposed. In this application, a package called bcrypt was used to hash the user's password before storing it in our database. We'll be using this package again to compare that the password entered by the user matches the one in the database. So make sure this is installed by running the following command in your terminal. Now we'll need to create a separate file to use the bcrypt package. This is because bcrypt relies on Node.js APIs that are not available within our middleware. So let's create a new file called auth.ts that spreads our auth config object like this. Now we need to add the providers option for next auth. Providers, as we kind of mentioned before, is an array where we can list different login options such as Google or GitHub. But as I already mentioned, in this video, we will be focusing on using the credentials provider, which again, allows us to log in with a username and password. All right, now we can add the sign in functionality. We can use the authorized function to handle the authentication logic. We'll use Zod to validate the email and password before checking if the user exists in the database. So make sure it's installed by running this command in our terminal. And now let's import it and use it like this. After validating the credentials, 
we'll create a new get user function that queries the user from the database. So let's import our database and user types like this and add this code to create our get user function. Now in our authorize function, we'll use this function to check if the user exists in our database. Then we can import bcrypt and call bcrypt.compare to check if the passwords match like this. If the passwords match, we want to return the user. Otherwise, return null to prevent the user from logging in. Now we need to connect the auth logic with the login form. In our actions.ts file, we'll create a new action called authenticate. This action should import the sign in function from auth.ts and it will look like this. Here we attempt to sign in a user using the sign in function from next auth with the provided form data. And if there's a credential sign in error, we show the appropriate error message. Finally, let's move into our login form component. We can use React's useFormState to call the server action and handle form errors. So let's import useFormState and our authenticate action, and we'll use it like this. Now we can use dispatch to trigger our authenticate server action. So let's add this to our form. And then down here in our forum, we can use error message to display any errors like this. Finally, we can use useFormStatus to handle the pending state of the form. So let's import it, and then down in our logic button, we can get pending from the use form status hook. Pending represents the current status of the form submission, specifically indicating whether the form submission is in progress. When pending is true, it implies that the form is currently being processed. So now we can use it to disable the button until the form submission is complete. Okay, now let's test this out. So here we have our app running locally. And first, let's enter the wrong credentials. Notice our error message displays correctly. Now, let's try to manually update the URL to take us to the dashboard without logging in. You'll see we get directed right back to the login page. This is because of our middleware matcher. Finally, let's enter the correct credentials and here we have it. We have successfully logged in. Now, all that's left to do is add the logout functionality. So here you'll see we have a sign out button, but if we click it, it doesn't actually sign us out. With next auth, adding this functionality is extremely simple. Let's move into our side nav component where we have our sign out button. And here, all we need to do is call the sign out function from auth.ts in the form element. So let's import sign out from auth and call it in our form like this. Now, if we go back to our browser and test it out, we'll see that our logout functionality works. And that's it, our implementation of authentication is complete. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.